Hi everyone, welcome again to Channel Code Board. In one of my earlier videos, I have discussed about, how can we bring our local host website, or application, to a live URL, using NG Rock VPN service. I have received many comments from viewers, about how can they keep, the NG Rock connection alive forever? Or, how can they map, a custom domain name? Well, NG Rock provides all these functionalities, as a paid service. And obviously, when you are a viewer of Channel Code Board, you don't have to pay for such services. Rather, we will develop something for our purpose. So, in today's video we will develop a Node.js based application, to access our local host sites from a live custom URL, for free of cost. Without any more delay, let's start. Before starting to development of actual Node application, let me show you that, I have developed, a very simple employee attendance system. But this will serve our purpose. This is developed in PHP and running in localhost, using WAMP server. Now, if I enter some data in the form, and save it, data will be saved. Let's enter another one. Okay, now if we go to the list, you will get to see the list of data what I have entered. Right, now, if I show you the code of this PHP application. It is just very simple two pages. In entry.php page, we have the form. Form has submit method post. And, in list.php page, we are listing data, using a HTML table. So our aim will be, to access this application using a public URL. Okay, I have created a workspace, for this application. I will create two subfolders here. Server app. And client app. Let me open the workspace in VS Code. Now, I will create a file inside server app folder, with name server.js and another file inside client app called client.js. We will write our code in these files. We will first install all required libraries for our project using npm. So let's open the command prompt. Let me go inside the server app folder. Now I shall create a node project using npm in it. It will ask me the name. Let's put localhost alive. Just keeping every other things as default. And, we are done. Now, we will install few libraries. First one is Express. So, let me install using, npm install Express. Next I will install Socket.io. So, npm install Socket.io. And finally, let's run, npm install Body Parser. Body parser module will help us to parse post request body. So, that's all for server side. Now let's go to client app folder. For client app we have to install two libraries. First one is socket.io client. And then superagent. Superagent is a node library for making HTTP request. And we are done. All our libraries are installed. Now, if I open package.json Inside server app folder, you will get to see the app details, and also the installed libraries. Let's start coding, with server.js. First, we will include all the libraries. Now, you can see, we have express instance, in app variable. I want express library to use, body parser library, to parse post request body. So, let's write, app.use, body parser. Now, I know, body parser is deprecated, and there are better alternatives. But, I want to keep code, as simple and familiar, as possible. So, just let's use body parser for now. You can use any other library, as per your choice. Next, we shall define two blocks, one is for handling get requests and another one is for post requests. I have used slash star for path matching. So it will match with all get and post requests. Now I will start the server. First, let me define the server port variable. After that, http.listen, and then let's provide server port. And in the callback function, just log a message for our understanding purpose. So, if I run this file, our HTTP server will be started at 3000 port. 
and all get requests will be available in this section, whereas the post requests will be available at the app.post section. Next, let's define a socket IO connection. So, IO.on connection. And then, in the callback function, let's put a log as a node connected. After that, let's handle an event page response. This event handling part, I will discuss later. For now, just keep it as it is. Before going into further code writing, let's discuss the plan by which we are going to expose localhost to a public URL. So, to understand that, you have to understand briefly how our internet connection works. Let's say you are connected with your home router. And your home router naturally gets connected with another router in your area provided by your ISP. And there can be multiple such routers. And finally, your ISP exposes all connections to a public IP. Now, if you check your private IP in most cases, it will be something like 192.168.0. a random number. So, this private IP is assigned to you from your home router. If there are multiple computers or mobile phones are connected with your home router, each device will get a separate private IP. Similarly, your home router will also get a private IP from ISP routers. So, in each layer, the connected device will get a private IP from its next layer's router. But, an external user will have access only to the public IP. So, if user makes a request to the public IP, all these routers will have no idea where to send the request because behind the public IP there can be thousands of devices are connected. Right? To solve this, we will create a persistent connection from our computer to public IP. But HTTP is not a persistent protocol, which means HTTP connection does not allow server and client to be connected forever. So, we will use WebSocket protocol for a persistent connection. Now, if we have a connection ready between public IP and our local system, then a request to public IP can directly reach to our system even if we are behind many routers. For using WebSocket protocol, we have created socket IO connection here. Now, this server.js file we will host in a public IP. So, whenever a user will make a HTTP request, it will be received in this app.get or app.post section. Correct? Now, we will receive that request and forward to client.js file. The server.js and client.js will be connected using WebSocket protocol. This might looks very difficult, but that's the concept. When we will do the coding, it will be much simpler. Let's start writing code for app.get. Let me first get the URL path. This URL parse dot path name will give us only the path, not the host, which means if we have URL as abc.com. Slash user slash name. Then we will get slash user slash name only in the path name variable. Now let's create a JavaScript object containing path, request method, and parameter. And then just emit this object to client using io.emit. Now we have to define a variable outside app.get. Let's name it as client response ref, and let's write inside app dot get as client response ref equals to our es. So we are keeping the response object reference temporarily in a variable. We will use it later. In app dot post section also, we have to write same kind of code. So just copy code from app dot get and paste it inside app dot post. Just change the method to post, and instead of request dot query, we have to get the request body. That is REQ dot body. Now we will proceed to write code in client dot JS. First, let me declare two variables: socket server URL and host alive. And then let's import required libraries. The socket server URL variable will contain the web socket server URL. We will define that later. The host to live variable will contain the local host URL, which we want to expose to public. For us, it is HTTP local host, right? Now let's write two events: server connect and disconnect. When connection to socket server will be successful, connected message will be printed in console. And when server will be disconnected, 
we will get to see a message as connection lost. Now, if you could remember, we emitted page request event from server.js. We will write code in client.js to receive that event and perform some tasks against it. So, socket.on page request. Then the callback function. Inside the callback function, we are receiving the variables, path name, method, and parameters sent from server.js. Then, I am constructing the local host URL. So, if server.js sent path as slash user slash name, we will forward that request to http localhost slash user slash name. And based on request method, we will do get or post call to localhost server. Now, we will define execute get and execute post methods. Using super agent library, we are going to make HTTP call to localhost URL. Now, execute post method will also be almost same. So just copy, execute get code, and paste below. Let's change the method name. And also, change the HTTP method, to post. So, you can see in the code, when we will get the full response, from localhost server, then we are emitting, page response event, from client.js. If you could remember, to handle this page response event, we already have written a code block in server.js. Correct? So, now just use the client response reference variable, and send the response back to the external user. So, in this way, localhost server's response is going back to external user, who is using the public URL. Now, we will host server.js and Heroku for free, for final testing. Before going into that part, let me request you, please subscribe to my channel Codeboard. Your comments, likes, and subscription, motivates me to create, many such interesting videos for all of you. Process to host in Heroku, I have already discussed in details, in one of my earlier videos. So, I am not going into that with all details. But, if you follow all the steps I am doing, you will be able to host it. It is very simple. Let's create a new app. Provide app name, localhost alive. Create the app. We will host, only the server.js file. So, open a command prompt inside server app folder. And just put all the commands, one by one, from Heroku page. And, finally you will get to see your live URL, ready for use. Now, our server.js is hosted, and running. Let's run, client.js. So, in command prompt, type, node, client.js. Well, we are getting some errors. Let me check. Okay, we have forgot to define the socket server URL. And also, did a spelling mistake. Let's fix this. And, run again node, client.js. Well, it's connected now. We will test it. Let's go to browser. Let me copy the live URL. Paste it in URL bar, and then slash attendance slash entry. Right? Bingo! Our localhost page is now coming up. Let's make an entry. It's working right? Let's go to list page. So, whatever we are seeing in localhost app, can see from live URL also. All is working fine. Correct? 
Now, I have a Spring Boot based Java application. It has only one endpoint. Slash test. The application is running at 9098 port. Now, let's change the host to live URL to localhost colon 9098 in client.js. Let's stop the client.js and rerun it again. Now, if I refresh this live URL page, nothing is coming up. Because, now client is pointing, to Spring Boot application, in local system. So, just change it to, slash test. And, you will get the output. Now, you can make all your local host application to live, just changing the URL and client. No change is required in the server. So, that's it for today. I have the codes in GitHub. If you want to contribute, you are very much welcome. There are many scopes of improvement, like supporting all HTTP methods, put, delete, etc. Once again, let me request you, please subscribe to my channel. Also, let me know your feedback in comment section. Bye for now.